Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Talk presented by Doc Dean's Pools. I'm James and this is Mike. And today we're gonna to be talking about phosphate, the silent killer of swimming pools. Phosphate is something that I know in the industry we cover quite a fair amount, but the regular homeowner, you may not know what phosphate really is. Is a chemical compound um, that is actually plant food. So what phosphate does is it's basically like steroids for plants. Now, if you've ever used, uh, what is it, like Scott's yard yep. feed, um, that has phosphate in it, right? That's what allows your grass to grow in nice and green and lush. It's so a fertilizer. It's, it's got nitrates and all other kinds of stuff in it. You need to understand that algae is a plant, you know? Uh, it is an actual living uh, cell. They are living cells that grow in the pools. And when you introduce phosphate in very, very, very low amounts, it is a superfood for them. Now, when it comes to phosphate, unlike most other pool chemicals, which you measure in parts per million, like if you ever test your chlorine, you'll notice that it's got like, uh, you're looking for a range between three and five parts per million um, of chlorine. If you're looking at your cyanuric acid, you're looking to be around 30 parts per million. If you're looking at calcium hardness, you don't want to be any higher than what, 300 parts per million? Three to 500. Right. Um, now, when it comes to phosphate, we actually look at parts per billion. I believe, I remember the first course that we did um, talking about phosphate probably 10 years ago, 15 mm -hmm. years ago maybe. Um, it was something stupid like 300 parts per billion will turn a pool green. Yeah, you know, in a hurry. That is, that, that, that's minuscule compared to everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So it really doesn't take a whole lot to give you any kind of issues with your pool. Now, say you spray down fertilizer and then in typical Florida fashion, it rains that afternoon. Mm -hmm. Fantastic for your grass. You know, your grass is getting hydrated. You don't have to turn your sprinkles on. And all of that stuff gets put nice and deep into the, uh, into the root system. But if you get any kind of runoff that goes into the pool, you need to understand that a portion of that phosphate will go into the water. That's correct. Now, can you explain why why that's such an issue for us in, in, you in have terms to, of pools? You were saying about um, spraying, you have to also remember planters. A lot of people have planters around their pools mm -hmm. and they like to have their plants in there and they'll feed their plants. As the plants grow, that phosphate will get into the water as well. So right, where, it, where it leaf debris it. comes in, right? Um, well, or, or, it, even when you're just doing fertilizer or just, you know, just regular maintenance routine, you know, the dirt, if the dirt gets into the pool, the dirt will have phosphate. Mm -hmm. so. Now, over the years, I've yeah. personally developed an eye for knowing when phosphates are an issue. Yeah, you can see. Um, we, always, if we think phosphate's a problem, we do the test, but I've kind of figured out personally um, just by looking at a green pool, whether or not it's got phosphate issues, mm -hmm. kind of lay of the land. And then I, I don't know what it is. I, I feel like the green in our phosphate pool has a special kind of green quality, if yeah, you will. And, and it's contained fairly much to the water as yeah. opposed to being on the walls. If it's on the walls, you know, it's, it's per pool chemistry. If it's physically the water, that's like this lime color. Yeah. You, kind of you, exactly. you know deep down and you get that sinking feeling so yeah uh if do, the the eyeball test is kind of if it looks like really weak like lemon lime gatorade mm -hmm. um I, I always lean towards okay we need to do a phosphate test on this now once you do a phosphate test maybe you find out that you've got maybe even 800 parts per billion chlor uh 800 parts per billion of uh, phosphate in there regular chlorine isn't going to get rid of this no doing some kind of crazy acid treatment isn't going to get rid of this. Yeah. You really have two options. Um, and I think it depends on how severe the, 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 the amount of phosphate is. Option number one is that chemical manufacturers now have developed really fantastic um, phosphate destroyers. Mm -hmm. they, they tend to work really, really well. But then the old, old school method before we really had constant access to all of this stuff um, it is simply to just empty the pool and fill it up again. Mm -hmm. By far the least cost effective method, because obviously what with all the sewage and then how expensive water may be, maybe you're in California and you're in a drought and you really can't do that. Sure. 
So there are fantastic chemicals out there that do destroy it. Um, it is something that it doesn't crop up in every pool every year. No. You know, you know it, it, it totally depends on the pool. Um, obviously, being Central Florida, we do, we do a percentage of vacation properties for, you know, Disney and the surrounding areas with all the theme parks and what have you. So a lot of these houses get used a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and what you have to remember is phosphate is a water softener as well and it's used in everything that we put on our body it, you know it's in your shampoo it's in your it's in your conditioner it's in your body lotions it's in the suntan lotion it is everywhere so every time you wash and clean yourself you're covering yourself with phosphate part of the reason that we ask that you shower before you enter a swimming pool you know, you'll see signs everywhere, please shower before bathing. Um, that's not because they want to get you, you know, wet and cold before you get in the pool. That's because they want to wash that phosphate off of you before you get into whichever facility you're in. If it's, if it's in a Disney park, if it's in a hotel, if it's in a vacation home, they want you to shower off that phosphate. Right. Because what happens is with the multiple bathers, <clears throat> that phosphate load will build up and up and up and up and up to the point it will it becomes problematic so if you're having a persistent problem where your pool is constantly turning green you're having to shock it um multiple times mm -hmm. a month yeah you know you can um, you can turn you can turn a pool with the best chemistry out there green overnight mm -hmm. by having an excessive yeah. phosphate load because um, phosphate as well, if I'm not mistaken, also just eats through chlorine. So you're dumping all this chemistry in there and you're kind of basically just burning all your money um, on it and you're giving yourself a massive headache. If you are having a consistent green pool issue, I definitely recommend testing your phosphate um, levels. Really, any degree of phosphate, you need to get something in there to get it removed. I think now, particularly in the winter time, is a fantastic opportunity because they algae is far less active at this point in time because the water is a lot colder so you have a really good opportunity to just remove all the phosphate so that you're good going into summer because the last thing anyone wants is for summer to hit we get that first hot weekend and then it's green you, no one can use it yeah this is a time of year to be doing very very low level doses because a very low level dose will be destroying the phosphate but if you do it constantly at it's not going to get a chance to build up mm -hmm. and you can really wipe it out before you get into the summer season which then gives you a chance to yeah, get all the way through right good on talking about phosphate here yeah uh, yeah to add? no just typical how to remove phosphate you've done that you said that yeah uh drain it or um chemical Proof. yeah so if you're experiencing persistent uh, green pool issues and you're trying everything else you can chemically, buy yourself a phosphate tester or have your contractor test your pool for phosphate. Um, if it comes back in any kind of positive reading, definitely get um, a phosphate removal agent in there. There's tons and tons of them. Um, if you need any advice, please just message us and we'll get back to you with uh, a chemical that we recommend. Thing, the thing with a phosphate remover is um, slow and steady. Go nice and low, slow and steady. Take it out bit by bit by bit. Um, every single phosphate remover out there contains a clarifier. So when you add it to your swimming pool, it will go cloudy. Mm -hmm. it, it will look like you, you know, that you spilt milk into the side of the pool. You will get that cloud. It will go around, disperse, be a little bit cloudy, but then it will start picking it up. Right. Yeah. So... If your pool chemistry is in perfect condition, but you're having persistent issues with color um, in your pools, make sure to check that phosphate and get it gone. Uh, this has been Tech Talk presented by Doc Dean's Pools. We've been talking about phosphate. I'm James, this is Mike. See you on the next one.